Now, so digging deeper into the Fifth Amendment and what was done on the stand, uh, I put up a video, uh, just a little, I put up a video saying that Jimmy Patterson did not take the Fifth. And I put up a part of the testimony that showed he was only going to answer uh, questions that pertain to the evidence in Darley's case if he was going to be accused of a crime in open court, then he wasn't going to speak on that anymore. And he did not take the fifth. I kind of stand by that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. And this was brought to the, my attention by other non-supporters and messages. You know, uh, Pam Flat said to me, yes, he did take the fifth. Okay. So she's correcting me, right? Which is good, and I appreciate her for that. I appreciate being corrected because I don't want to sit and think that I've got something right. And the supporters, uh, the non-supporters have done this through the years. We will correct each other politely. So I, I'll put it this way. This is how I'll put it. I still believe, you know, the supporters use uh, Jimmy took the fifth as the reason for a new trial. Now, uh, Jimmy took, Jimmy refused to answer any more questions where he was being accused of a crime. But again, he did, he went on and, and I say again a lot, just like Greg, Greg Davis does. He went on to testify about everything else, but this was brought to my attention. This was brought to my attention by, uh, Miss Cooper and Pam brought to my attention there that they did take the fifth, but it's not like a full fifth in my opinion. I know Pam never gets it wrong. So, this was brought to me by Christy Cooper, and I've seen it before, but it, it goes into more of how, what was actually done in the courtroom. So, Greg Davis, the prosecutor, says, Yes, sir, at this time, the state would indicate that we believe this testimony is not relevant about them placing the uh, wiretap. It's improper impeachment. Improper impeachment means they're accusing them of a crime that isn't a crime. They're trying to impeach that whole witness. And again, I'm talking about the subject of the mic at the grave site. And we would, we, we would ask that the court instruct Mr. Mulder not to go into these matters any further in front of this jury. Because again, we feel the prejudicial effect here of having to inform the jury that these officers have taken the Fifth Amendment. Now, Greg Davis puts it out like that. They've taken the Fifth Amendment on that subject. So I will give the supporters that. Again, Greg Davis says again a lot. See, he says it here. He says it in interviews again, again. I, and I picked up on that over the years. We believe the matters are irrelevant and that they're improper impeachment. Well, then putting that wiretap there is irrelevant, actually. Because it had nothing to do with the evidence against Darley. Now, let's say, and this has happened before where police have placed uh, recording things, and they've caught people confessing it's at funerals. Let's say that they caught Darley confessing, because that's what they were hoping for. You know, then, then, then what? The court, now when the judge, who had Alzheimer's and didn't know what the hell he was doing on the stand, apparently, the state is not going to use anything that came of that. That means the state is not going to present it. If the state's not going to present the recording, then they don't have to talk about it. That is correct. We are not going to in, go into that matter. We are not going to offer those recordings, video or otherwise. So we we did not intend to talk about that matter in front of this jury. So as long as they don't... But what happened out of that was Davis agreed that they weren't, even, they weren't going to admit... It was a 14-hour long tape. Uh, of the gravesite, 14 hours, over over 14 hours. He said, look, we're not going to use that tape, so why the hell are they talking about it being put there? Right? So what happened was, you know, he's the, the, the officer said they weren't going to answer any more questions about this. And they didn't. It was only on that. And Greg Davis Greg Davis put an end to the deflection. That's what he did. Very well. Well, let's not talk about Darley's crime. Let's talk about the crime that they're doing by 
put this thing here and it wasn't a crime at the end at the end it was found not to be a crime so that's where we stand on that and i appreciate supporters uh challenging i appreciate supporters putting up things and say this and that i like for it to be challenging so that the the public knows exactly what happened in that case that's what i'm here for that's what we're here for peace and chicken grease thanks pam thanks uh cindy for setting this matter straight and not letting people you know not, not letting me go on and, but, you know, honestly, he never took the fifth. He never said, I'm taking the fifth amendment. He said, I'm not answering more, any more questions on that subject. That's where we're at with it. Oh, and for those who stalk my page, <laughs> I, those who follow my page, those who are looking at my page, look at my community posts. You know, because they are, uh, my community posts are also quite interesting. And be, feel free to comment. I have a thick skin, and I can take being corrected. And if the supporters come up with something that I think is relevant, then I'll say so. I had a non-supporters mad at me over the whole thing, you know, where Darren's on the tape years ago. Darren's on the tape, and it sounds to me like he said, did Blake come in here? And a lot of non-supporters were like, no, that's not what I hear. That's not what I hear. And I said, well, it sounds to me like he's saying, did Blake come in here? All right, and I stand firm on it. when I When I think something... I stand for them. I don't care if people don't like it. I wouldn't care if my best, like, there were some times, there were some times in the beginning of my non-support of this that I was kind of, still a little bit iffy, right? And if I thought something, I would say it. I didn't care what people thought. You know, like, if the supporters show me something where I think she's innocent, because if I think she's innocent, these non-supporters are my friends, right? But I will, I will say, no, this makes her innocent. And I, I, I won't care about their opinion when I have my own, honestly. And they know this. And I would, I would hope that any of us non-supporters, if we see something that makes her, makes us feel like she's innocent, we need to say it and stand on it. And I haven't. I have, I have yet to see it. There's been a couple of times, though, where I've disagreed with non-supporters but the, the the best thing that we got is that we will correct each other 